Hello and welcome. In our lesson today, we are going to tackle past KCC questions on extraction of copper. So stay tuned. So our first question is from 2013, paper 1, and it goes as such. Name two ores from which copper is extracted. So copper has the following ores. There's copper pyrites, cuprite, calcolite, and malachite. But copper pyrites are the main ore from which copper is extracted. Now, since they didn't specify the main ore, then any of these ores is correct. Part B. During extraction of copper metal, the ore is subjected to froth flotation. Give a reason why the process is necessary. Okay, just to remind ourselves. A lot of the metal ores tend to have impurities. Now, these impurities can be in the form of sand, soil, even other elements as such. So, copper metal, of course, the copper ores also have impurities. Now, before copper metal can be extracted from its ores, the ore needs to first be concentrated. So, what do we mean by concentrated? Impurities need to be reduced. Now, in the case of copper, this is done through a process called froth flotation. The purpose of froth flotation, therefore, is to concentrate the ore, that is, remove as many impurities as possible. If you're interested in learning more about froth flotation, please check out my video on extraction of copper where I go into details about it. Now, moving on to part C, name one alloy of copper and state its use. So, copper has two and these are brass and bronze. Now, brass is used in making of nuts and bolts. It's used also in making of jewelry. And lastly, making of musical instruments. Bronze, on the other hand, is used in making coins, medals, etc. So, I believe we are now ready to tackle another question. This is from 2019, paper 1, and the question goes as such. The flowchart in figure 1 represents some stages in the extraction of copper metal. Study it and answer the questions that follow. Now before we answer the questions, let us first discuss the flowchart itself. Now our origin is the copper ore. So copper has several ores as stated before. We have copper pyrites, cuprite, calcolite and malachite. So how do we know which ore this is supposed to be? Now, there's our hint. Now, whatever all this is, when roasted in air, forms three compounds, copper one sulfide, two oxide, and sulfur four oxide. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is no other ore except for copper pyrites, which is the main ore of copper. Next step. So, the ore, the copper pyrites, are then crushed. This simply means that they are ground into a fine powder. And then process B happens. Now, in order to know what process B entails, let's look at the outcome of process B. So we are told that the ore is concentrated. Now, in extraction of metals, whenever you hear the terms concentration of the ore, it simply means a process whereby impurities are removed. Now, in the case of copper, this is done through a process called froth flotation. Now, after the ore has been concentrated, it's then roasted in air. That means that it's heated under high temperatures with a supply of air, oxygen, of course. So we're going to have a reaction between the copper pyrites and oxygen. Now, this will lead to the three compounds that have been shown above. Now, let us discuss what happens to each of these three compounds. So let's start with the easiest of all, sulfur for oxide. Now, sulfur 4 oxide is a gas, so it's easily separated. So it's collected and it's either used for the manufacture of sulfuric 6 acid in the contact process or it's scrubbed using calcium hydroxide. Now, this is because sulfur 4 oxide cannot be allowed to escape into the surrounding since it causes formation of acid drain. Next, what happens to the iron 2 oxide? Now, iron 2 oxide is separated with the use of silica. Silica is silicon 4 oxide. So iron 2 oxide reacts with the silicon 4 oxide to form iron 2 silicate. Now this is removed as slug, as a waste product. So we are left with copper 1 sulfide. Now the copper 1 sulfide is further heated in a regulated supply of air. So this causes the copper 1 sulfide to react with oxygen 
to form copper 1 oxide plus sulfur 4 oxide. Now, I want you to make a note of this. Not all of the copper 1 sulfide will react with the oxygen. Some of it will not. So right now in the furnace, you're going to have a mixture containing copper 1 sulfide, which did not react, and copper 1 oxide. Now these two will then react with one another. So copper 1 sulfide will react with copper 1 oxide. Now let's pause there. In case you're wondering, why are we talking about copper compounds where copper has an oxidation number of 1? Then this is the reason. Now copper has two oxidation states, 1 and 2. I know some of us might be used to compounds where copper has an oxidation number of 2, such as copper 2 oxide, copper 2 sulfate, but copper can also have an oxidation number of 1, and that is why we are talking about compounds such as copper 1 sulfide and copper 1 oxide. Now these two compounds react with one another to form copper metal plus sulfur 4 oxide. And now we are done. Now if we look at our flowchart, we'll notice that there is solid C that is being formed from the furnace. And that of course will be copper. Now let's look at the question. Part A, identify the copper O, that is copper pyrites. Process B, froth flotation. Solid C, copper metal. Part B, write an equation for the reaction that forms the slug. And there we have it. See, there's nothing difficult about it. So I hope that this has managed not only to increase your knowledge in extraction of copper, but also boost your confidence in yourselves. So see you in our next video.